And th this week's parsha begins with Vayigash Elav Yehuda. So we have over here a real meeting of titans. The meeting of the two Arayis, the two lions. Yehuda and Yosef, they're both kings. Yosef is the king of Mitzrayim. Mishnah Lamelech. And Yehuda is the king of his brothers. And analyzes the parsha. And says, Yehuda and Yosef, who over here showed a greater strength? Who was Taka the stronger one? Yes. Superficially, it would seem that Yosef was. On the other hand, Yosef was acting under the mandate that he received from Pare. Pare made him the Mishnah of Allah. Pare made him second in command. And Pare was very clear. <laughs> right? But everything that happens in the country, you're under control. So Yosef was acting 100% according to the norms, the customs, the conventions, and the law of the land. So he was exerting power, but it was power which was, you might want to say, normal power. It was uh, following the normal, the, the normal structure and the normal conventions. Yehuda comes along over here, and he completely destroys convention. With Vayigash Yehuda, Yehuda, Yehuda comes and says, you're the king, you're the king, and I'm the subject. But nevertheless, I'm defying all the conventions. And he went straight over to, to Yosef. And as we know, Vayigash, he, he was ready to go to battle, if necessary. And what he was doing, and that's why he says, Don't get angry, because he knew that he was, he was totally acting out of line. So in a way, Yehuda shows over here strength that Yosef didn't. Yehuda says, I might be in Golos, but at the same time, you can't contain me. With all your rules that you have, you can't contain me. I am going to do things the way that Hashem wants. And yes, I'm recognizing Golos, which is why I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you as the king. But at the same time, I'm disregarding Golos, and I'm realizing the power that Hashem has given me. And this is something, interestingly, which was continued in the generations that followed, when we have Ish Yehudi. Ish Yehudi Hayyab Shushan Abira. So there was a person whose name was Mardachai. As you know, that Mardachai was from the Shevet of Binyamin. And even though he's Shevet of Binyamin, he's called Ish Yehudi. He's called from Yehuda. Why? Because. It's exact. Because he also, Mardachai lo Yichra velo Yishnachava. Mardachai says, I, I could be in Golos from Tate tomorrow. But, I'm not but when it comes to Torah, when it comes to mitzvahs, there is not no budging. compromise. It's going to be exactly the way it's supposed to be, and the, which was the same attitude as of, uh, of Yehuda. This is a much greater strength than the strength of Yosef, because Yosef ultimately he was just executing the strength that he was given by Pare. Whereas Yehuda, you might want to say, was going extra curricular strength. He was disregarding. The, the, the norms and saying, I might be in Golos, Akati Avdi Achashvedu Shanan, to paraphrase the Gemara Megillah, we might still be subjects of Pare. But when it comes to a Yiddish Akind, when it comes to Binyaman, or when it comes to Avedah Zara, la yichrav la yishtachva, there is no bending, there's no bending a drop. And what ended up happening in both of those instances, their way was vindicated. Because Havayu Hu Alekim. Because we don't need to have miracles. Going back to we spoke. Because ultimately, Teva itself also will allow the Yid to be a Yid. And ultimately, when you stand up to Teva, when you stand up to the king, you know what you're going to find out? The king is Yosef. That's what you're going to find out. Or you'll become the king. Because the recognition that Teva itself, even when we're in Golos, even when we're in Golos, Teva itself is also a Lekos.